So let's have a look into those six cases that we need to consider to balance the balance sheet. Suppose we're just looking at net income here and, well, let's start with the first one. Let's assume that we have positive net income and no overdraft use, that is, current accounts in the balance sheet are zero. Note here that cash and equivalents and current accounts are balance sheet items and thus non-negative. So balance sheet items can never ever be negative. They are positive for zero. And uh, well, this is important because when we implement this logic here, we just need to make sure that in case something becomes negative, that implicitly means that it moves to the other side of the balance sheet, which is something that we will also see when we deal with negative equity. Let's start then with the first case again, positive net income and no overdraft. This just means that we will increase our cash and equivalents on the asset side of the balance sheet with net income. That's very simple. And the counts accounts, well, nothing will change there. Here in terms of notation, note that I'm using plus equals and minus equals, which is just saying that, for example, cash and equivalents is equal to cash and equivalents plus net income here in this first example, or current accounts are equal to current accounts plus zero. Then we have the second case, and here it now gets a bit more complex, so let's look into that. We have positive net income and used overdraft, where the net income is less than or equal to the used overdraft, which just means that we cannot pay back the entire overdraft because there's not enough net income for this. So naturally, this means that we will still have no cash and equivalents from this, so this goes up by zero. While, while we reduce the current accounts by the entire net income, and eventually we would just have something in the current accounts. There's a third case though, and that's where net income is larger than the used overdraft. So naturally now we can pay back the entire overdraft, or here the current accounts in this case, so this will just go down to zero, and what's left will go up in the cash and equivalents. So they go up by net income, minus the used overdraft, so what's left of net income that we do not need to pay back the count accounts or overdraft. Now let's look into how we handle negative net income. So suppose we had no cash. That, well, that would just mean that the accounts accounts would go up by our net income. But, well, not by our net income, but by the absolute value of net income as net income happens to be negative here. Well, cash and equivalents, well, there would be no change at all because we didn't make any money. Let's look at the fifth case. So we have negative net income and available cash, where the absolute value of net income is less than or equal to available cash. So this just means that the cash and equivalents, they go down by the absolute value of net income, while there is no change in the current accounts. So here the thing is just that we had so much cash that it didn't make that much of a well, difference to current accounts or not, no difference at all because well, we could pay for the entire net income with the cash that we just had. Now let's look at a sixth case. In the sixth case, the absolute value of net income happens to be larger than the cash that we got available. And this just means that cash and equivalents will go down to zero and we need to take out some current accounts. And the amount for that is just, well, the absolute value of net income as it is negative minus the available cash. So what we didn't have to take out here because we just had enough cash to pay for that. So these are the six cases that uh, we will look into and that are easy for balancing the balance sheet. This also works equivalently for negative delta networking capital or negative delta net balance sheet just as it works for positive net income. So you would just have to replace these terms here and it would respectively work out. And it is important to keep in mind that balance sheet positions are never negative.